Before I start this video, let me preface it by saying that this is on my server, but the server is not public and it never will be public. Please do not ask for the IP. What is up guys, welcome to another Minecraft video. Today we are going to be taking a look at the old fire alarm panel in Boss Domain. Now I know I said that I was going to be going over the full history of fire alarm systems in this building, but I ran into an issue with that because the addressable system that was once in that building is not compatible with Minecraft 1.16 and the actual panel itself was in a spawn chunk, so I can't even show you in single player. So instead, I'm just going to give you a detailed look at the original massive obnoxious panel in Boss Domain. Let's go ahead and get started. So here it is, guys. This thing is absolutely insane. Look at this thing. Oh, let, let's, let's go left to right here. So over on the left, we have all 33 zones. Um, they're kind of organized weird and how they go right to left here, but we have my apartment, main lobby, apartment hallway, locker room and pool, field goal practice, and I'm not even going to bother reading the rest of them because it's going to make the video too long, so if you're curious, just pause the video here and you can see. Moving along here, we have a few of the controls here. We have master box tie disable, the dialer disable, sprinkler disable, strobe knock disable, and walk test. Continuing on here, we have the keypad for uh, the controls because you can actually lock them, which I thought is pretty cool. And next up, we have the main controls and indicators here. So we have drill, controls lock, system reset, silent system, and acknowledge. Now over here, we have three different coding options. We've got code 3, 120 beat per minute march time, and 75 beat per minute march time. Now over here, we have the result of me adding a lot of features to this panel after this area was already kind of set in stone. So over here we have the uh, disabled points indicator, strobe knack, sprinklers, and master box tie. Uh, over to the left of that we have another system normal indicator. We have a device type activated indicator, which is another thing that no longer happens on the newer panels, fire drill indicator, and a sprinkler indicator, and another reset button here on the floor. So before we go ahead and take a look inside this thing, this was the DSN Services Model MS9857 DSA Fire Alarm Control Panel. And here's the massive, insane, ridiculous mechanics room for this panel. I don't even know where to start here, alright? This is absolutely insane. Look at this. Alright, I guess we'll start back here. These are the NACs. So this one right here is the strobe knack. All of these command blocks, all they do is... Um, actually, I guess a few of them weren't even used. Are you serious? Oh no. Oh no. I, I guess they all got reset. <laughs> that's not That's not good. Well, regardless, they work the same way that the uh, strobe knacks work in the newer panel. They set block redstone blocks behind a redstone lamp, and the other one set air but somehow all of these just completely went away. I have no idea. Anyway, the other ones here are horn knacks. These are all silenceable, if I remember correctly. Let's see if any of these are still here. I know a few of them have to be because some of the alarms do still go off here. All right, I found one. This is what it does. The first one in line sets a redstone block behind a note block or a redstone lamp, and the other one replaces it with air, making them pulse. Now, something that is different from the new panels is that just look at how power gets up to them from the coders. So this is the strobe coder right here. It is a, uh, I guess it's a 75 beat per minute march time code. It goes all the way up from the floor through this redstone torch tower and powers the uh, strobes up here. And the same is true over here for the horn knacks, except if you look, um, this absolutely would not have been in sync because of these redstone repeaters. But you know what? I think only one of the knacks got used before this panel was replaced, so it never really ended up mattering. And all the knacks have disable switches. Down here on the floor is all of the coders. We'll go left to right here again. Right here we have the Code 3 coder. This is a uh, first iteration of this thing. It actually kind of sucks. I'll demonstrate how it works in just a second here. And going along here we have the 120 beat per minute march time coder. And finally, we have another 75 beat per minute march time coder, but for the horns. Up here, we have the sprinkler controller module. This is very much the same concept as the horns and the strobes. When it goes into alarm, it replaces a block in the ceiling with air, and behind the block is water, 
and the water just flows down and extinguishes what fire would be there. Very basic, kind of crappy design, but it worked. It's now disabled though. You guys want to take a guess of what this long strip of command blocks is? It is the uh, panel reset module. Yep, because why? I don't know. I have no idea why it's like this. Over here is the zones. Now, this is also completely different from how the panels work now, and I will also demonstrate this later on, but the way that this panel would be set into alarm is when you pull a pull station, it would set a redstone block behind one of these repeaters here. That signal would go up all the way through this redstone torch ladder again. This was a big thing in panels back in the day, I guess. And eventually it would lead up to the zone light and also somehow activate the alarm. Honestly, I have, I have no idea how this worked. It's This was such a long time ago that we built this panel that I honestly can't remember. I do know that this is for the supervisory zones though, because those work different. The last, I believe, four zones are supervisory. They give power to this redstone circuit here, which goes over here to, you guessed it, another redstone torch ladder. And then we can follow that to here, and then it keeps on going. On the other side of this iron block here is the um, system supervisory indicator because we didn't know about set block commands when this was built, I guess. But then again, we have all of these set block commands for the NAC, so I have no idea what we were thinking, honestly. And yes, all of the buttons for the controls for this panel are hardwired through these redstone torch ladders, and it's just absolutely freaking insane. Now, I talked about the ability to lock the controls on this panel, and that's done by this right here. So if you were to push the lock button on the panel, this is what would happen. So, you might be wondering why the pistons are so delayed from each other. The truth is, the machine that this server was originally hosted on was not powerful enough to do all of the pistons at the same time, so we had to put in the delay. I, yeah, that's, yep. Anyway, the way this works is all of the controls for the panel run through here, and when the piston blocks it, you can no longer do anything. And we'll demonstrate that with the reset button. Check this out. See, I, I didn't really show it that well, but hopefully you were able to see that it stopped right here where the piston blocked the redstone uh, circuit. Now, honestly, I have no idea how the locking system here actually works, but it does. It uses these four pistons right here. Um, so this is what it looks like when you put in the code on the panel. Very weird. It's really cool though. I don't- I have no idea how we managed to get that to work. And it does only work with the code too. If you try to put something in other than 4321, you're not gonna unlock the panel. Now another thing that has changed a lot in the new panels is the design of the pull station. Now this is the old pull station design. It very simply just says, in case of fire, pull down. And um, it's... Yeah, that's all it is. That's it right there. Now the audible signaling was just note blocks. Just one note block, one tone, and the strobes are pretty much the same as they are now. Another part of this system was these insane outdoor mass notification type deals that I made. Um, all but one have been disabled for this video though because they're just, they're just insane. And here's an example of one of the sounders. This is a uh, DPI model, S-Tone Loud. Uh, this was before DSN services back when I was still using that Dubbing Point Incorporated name. So guys, the time has come to actually demonstrate this system and to do that we are going to have someone pull a pull station in the apartment complex hallway, as that's one of the few that's left. And you can hear the delay. So, there it is. There's the piezo right there, the internal buzzer. You can hear the alarms going throughout boss domain. Now, there's the uh, zone light right there, zone 3 apartment hallway. And, um, 
This zone active light will be important in just a second here, I'll explain. When you were to pull a pull station, it would set a redstone block here. That would travel up this redstone torch ladder all the way up until it eventually hit its desired uh, zone, which is right there, as you can see. And we used repeaters as conduit, basically, here and it eventually lit up its actual zone. That's why there's rows of iron between the zone indicators, because we had to do this system here, because we weren't smart enough to know about set block. But as you can see, I figured it out later on for the drill light. Back here you can see all of the knacks going. All the horn knacks, as you can see, they are... Um, actually... No, that looks like they would be synced. Okay, I guess I was wrong. Yeah, they actually look pretty synced. Now over here, the strobe knack, only one of them is going, and that's because I have taken the liberty to put the new strobes into the old system because all of the original strobes are gone. So walking around boss domain back when this was its original system is what it would sound and look like. Strobes flashing, alarms sounding. it is. And for those wondering, this is the outdoor mass notification. Insane. I have no idea why I thought that was a good idea. Now I'm gonna go ahead and silence the alarm. I want you to take note of how long it takes for something to actually happen. And there you go. And the uh, piezo, of course, is still going because you have to acknowledge it. Now, something this panel did have that the new ones also have is audible silence. As you can see, the alarm is silenced and the strobes continue flashing. Now, this is where the biggest detriment of this panel comes from. As you can see, that zone active light is still on because the pull station has not been reset. Check what happens when you try to reset the system with an active zone. right back into alarm just like a real fire alarm system. Now as you can see the redstone block is still here because the pole station is still pulled. Now check what happens when you reset the pole station. Redstone block goes away, but as you can hear the system stays in alarm, which is all well and good. But the issue is when you reset the pole station, the zone light shuts off. This was the biggest detriment of this panel and honestly if that wasn't an issue, I would probably still be using this panel today because it's, it's just so cool. But now we can reset normally. This one also doesn't lamp test, which kind of sucks, but that's okay. So we're gonna go ahead and switch this over to code 3, and again, even changing your signal coding it takes forever with the system. Anyway, I'm going to show you why that coder is really not the best design. This is what happens when it goes into alarm. That's how it works. It's slow, it's inaccurate. As you can see, every time it pulses, it creates drops, which creates lag, and on the old server, that was also incredibly detrimental because that machine couldn't even run the panel to begin with. But basically, the command block set redstone blocks, or sorry, redstone wire here, so that it connects the uh, signaling circuit here shortly and pulses in what sort of sounds like code 3, it's just a really bad design, and I don't know why we thought it was a good idea. Alright, so this is what's behind the coding option selection buttons. Uh, as you can see, this is all hardwired as well, and uh, this is what happens when you change signal coding. As you can see, it travels all the way over here, and it actually disables the uh, Code 3 coder. The new panels just leave it running no matter what um, signal coding you're using, but then again, they don't create drops like this one does. It also disables the 75 beat per minute one as well. 
Now, I'll show you guys again from back here. This is what happens when you change the signal coding to uh, 75 from back here. You can see the redstone signal come in and then take over. And just for fun times, we'll go back to code 3 one last time. It's, uh, it's pretty insane looking at this panel. And because I know someone's going to ask in the comments, this is what the system sounds like in Code 3. Strobes don't change, but there it is. Now, you might notice that high-pitched beeping. Check this out. Let's see if I can actually find it. Where are we at here? That's not it. Here it is. Check this out. This is a remote relay disabler. There used to be an enunciator for this panel here as well, but not anymore. Let's see if we can find the piezo. Yep, there it is. It's insane. Yep, when I upgrade the systems, I usually don't take out the old ones. So anyway, guys, as you can hear, the code 3 is quite slow. Listen to that. And actually, when you move through the building, the tone of the note blocks changes. I completely forgot about that. Let's see if we can't find one. Yep, here's one of the uh, old... I think this was the S-Tone H loud or something like that. Right next to a sounder for the new system. There you go, now you can see that a little bit, a little bit better. There's the sounder for the old system right next to the sounder for the new one. Very, very slow code 3. And while we're up here, we're just going to give you guys a listen to 120 beat per minute march time. This might actually be the first time you guys are hearing this run this nicely because I've never done a video of it with a good machine before. And now just for fun, let's see if we can still control it with this old enunciator. I have no idea if this still works. Oh my gosh, it still works. How awesome is that? As you can see here, this uh, enunciator has been uh, deprecated, N no longer used, but I left it. And as you can see, it's only silenced, it's not reset, it doesn't look like the indicators work, but the buttons do. And there you go, so when you when I hit reset, actually, you know what, we're gonna hit re-alarm really quick. Will it work? Ah, I guess not, that's unfortunate. We're gonna hit reset. And there you go. The enunciator, all these years later, buried behind new circuitry for new strobes and new systems still works. That's pretty awesome. So before we end this video, guys, I'm just going to give you one last look through here. Look at this thing. This thing is insane. And I didn't really address it, but yes, Andrew did put in a kill field, but it no longer works under 1.16. Um, you can see the uh, generator thing right back there. And uh, this... All the stuff back here is not part of the actual system. These are just little prototype deals that me and a couple of my friends were working on and never did anything with. The actual panel ends right here. This this panel is insane. I don't know how we made it work, but you know what? It's a piece of history on this Minecraft server. It's absolutely awesome, and I love it. Anyway though guys, that is going to be it for another Minecraft video. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Big shout out to Mo Storm Chaser for helping me out with this video controlling the panel while I showed you the behind the scenes of what happens when you press buttons. I'll link his channel in the description and on the outro. But anyway guys, until the next video, that is going to be it. Thank you for watching.